Well, welcome back. We're now starting section 2.6, and 2.6 is differentiation of implicit functions. Now, implicit differentiation. A differentiation of a function where one variable, typically y, is not explicitly uh, expressed as a function of another variable, typically x. So an example of an, an implicit function would be something like this, y, y times x equals x cubed plus 2x times y squared minus y. Again, uh, we have to solve for y in order to take the derivative in the way that we've learned in the, the pre, uh, preceding chapters. In other words, we typically want to solve for y and then we've been taking the derivative. But what happens when you can't solve for y? Look at this particular equation. In this case, you cannot solve for y, and not every case can you actually solve for y. Well, you can still find this derivative, but you have to do a technique called implicit differentiation when you can't get your equation just in terms of y. So let's look at some examples. So here's my examples. Find dy dx for the following. Here in this one, I have x squared plus y minus 11 equals 8x. In this particular example, it is very simple to solve for y to take derivative. And that's exactly what you should do to take derivative. So if I had this equation, x squared plus y minus 11 equals 8x, and they asked me to find the derivative, dy dx, I'm going to solve this thing for y. So I would subtract x squared from both sides and add 11 to both sides. This one's easy. You can solve for y. These, guys, these terms cancel. This would be equal to negative x squared plus 8x plus 11. Now, it's as simple to take derivative. So we take derivative the usual way. So the derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x plus derivative of 8x is 8. And there's my solution. However, compare that to the next example. In this example, we have x squared plus 3y squared minus 4x plus 7y equals 14. This is a y squared term with a y term. I've got an x term here, an x squared term here, and a 14. I can't solve this thing for y. It's not as easy as this former equation where it was easy to just move terms to the other side to actually get a y equals equation out of this guy when I have a y cubed is impossible. So therefore, to get a, this is what we call an implicit uh, equation. So we're going to do implicit differentiation. Now with implicit differentiation, the trick is this. You've got x squared plus 3y squared minus 4x plus 7y equals 14. And what you're going to do is just take the equation that you're given and jump in with both feet and take the derivative with respect to x. Notice my notation ddx means take derivative of what follows. So, with a bunch of terms being added or subtracted, I take derivative of each term. So this is going to give me my derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x. Plus, the derivative of 3y squared, well, with respect to x, will give you this. Well, you take derivative as normal. The derivative of 3y squared would be 6y. But then, you've got to do times dy dx. Now, the reason for this actually comes from the chain rule. The derivative outside, inside stays the same time derivative the inside. Remember, you're taking the derivative with respect to x, and you got a y variable here. So you take the derivative of the outside, so the 2 pops out front. So 2 times 3 is 6. The y stays the same. Subtract 1 from the exponent, raise it to the first power. So that's where your 6y comes from. But then times the derivative of the inside. The inside is the y term. And the derivative of y, by definition, is dy dx. So, in other words, every time you take a derivative of one of these implicit forms, and every time you take a derivative of a y term, don't forget to multiply times dy dx for the derivative of the inside. Well, let's keep going. Minus derivative of 4x is just 4, plus derivative of 7y. Well, it's a y term, so to take derivative of it, derivative of 7y is 7. But since you got a y term, you've got to take, multiply that times dy dx. And remember, what you do to one side, you do to the other. So I've got to take derivative of the other side. But the other side's a constant, 14. And derivative of 14 with respect to x is 0. However, we're not done yet. We have got to take, we got to, figure out what dy dx is. That's still my direction up here. 
find dy dx. So now it becomes algebra. I'm going to treat dy dx as a variable and I'm going to solve for it. So the terms that do not have dy dx in it move to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. This leaves me with 6y dy dx plus 7 dy dx is equal to negative 2x plus 4. Now you've got multiple terms, in this case two terms, with dy dx in it. So to solve for it, you need to factor it out. So dy dx times 6y plus 7 is equal to negative 2x plus 4. And then the last move you make is to solve for the dy dx. I'm going to divide by that 6y plus 7, and that's going to give me dy over dx is equal to negative 2x plus 4 divided by 6y plus 7. And there's my solution. And we call this implicit differentiation because, remember, the original equation had my x's and y's all intermixed. And so will my derivative. I have x's and I also have y terms within my derivative. But I did solve for dy dx, so this is an equation for the derivative. So let's do another example. Try this one. In this equation, I have x cubed times y squared plus 9y plus 3x equals 4. So again, there's no possible way to sit there and solve for y in this particular problem. So what I'm going to do here is use implicit differentiation. So I'm going to take the equation x cubed times y squared plus 9y plus 3 equals 4, and take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. Remember, we're looking for dy dx. So take derivative with respect to x. Now, this first term, I got x cubed times y squared. Well, here's where it gets interesting. x cubed times y squared is a product. So to take derivative of a product, I use the product rule. Remember the product rule. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. So let's do that, derivative of the first. What's the root of x cubed? It's 3x squared. It's an x, so we're good because we're taking the root of respect to x. So it's the root of the first times the second, just times y squared, plus the first, x cubed, leave it alone, times the root of the second. Well, what's the root of y squared? Well, it's 2y, but because it's a y term and you got that chain rule, times the root of the inside, times dy dx. Every time I take the root of y, I do this times dy dx. Plus, so there's my product rule. Drew the first times the second plus the first times the second. Plus, now draw the next term is 9y. Drew the 9y is 9, but it's a y term, so I have to multiply that dy dx. This is for your benefit. Plus, what's the root of 3 being a constant? 0 equals and the root of 4 is 0. Now, you want to solve for dy dx. So here are the terms with dy dx in them. So I'm going to move this term to the other side by subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 3x squared y squared from both sides. This is going to give me x, oh, let's clean it up, 2x cubed times y dy over dx plus 9 dy over dx equals negative 3x squared y squared. Now I'm going to solve for dy dx, so I'm going to factor it out, and I got it in multiple terms, I always factor that out. This will be dy dx times 2x cubed y plus 9 equals negative 3x squared y squared. And to solve for dy dx, we're going to, since this means multiplied, we would divide to get dy dx by both sides, uh, get by himself. So this would be dy dx is equal to negative 3x squared y squared divided by 2x cubed y plus 9. And there's my solution. And notice, as I had an implicit uh, equation, I have a implicit, implicit derivative. I have x's and y's all intermixed in my derivative. So, what can we do with this stuff? Well, here's the deal. Try number four. And some professors use dy dx. Other professors use y prime. It's different notation for the same thing, the derivative. So, find y prime for the equation. 3y plus 12 minus x squared minus y to the fourth equals 0, and evaluate it at the point 2, negative 1. Another way I could have worded this problem was, find the slope of the tangent line. 
of this equation at the point 2, negative 1. It's the same thing. And usually when you do the slope of the tangent line, the next usually question is going to be, what's the equation of the tangent line? We end up taking the information and using the point slope formula. But let's get this guy first. Let's find the slope of the tangent line of this equation, 3y plus 12 minus x squared minus 4y equals 0 at the point 2, negative 1, a.k.a. we're going to find y prime of this guy. So here's my equation. 3y plus 12 minus x squared minus y to the fourth equals 0. And I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. So derivative of 3y is going to be 3. And derivative of y is y prime or dy dx. You can use y prime or dy dx. They're interchangeable. Plus derivative of 12 with respect to x. Derivative of constant is 0. Minus derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x because that is an x variable. Minus root of y to the fourth. Well, that's a y variable. We'll take root above it. That'll be 4y cubed. But then times root of the inside, because you got a y, you got to tack on that dy dx or y prime. Equals and root of the zero is still zero. So now I'm going to once again solve for dy dx. So the terms that do not have dy dx, like the minus 2x, I'm going to move to the other side by adding 2x to both sides. This gives me 3 dy over dx minus 4y cubed dy over dx equals 2x. And now I'm going to factor the dy dx out. That leaves me with 3 minus 4y cubed equals 2x. And now I'm going to divide and get my dy over dx equals 2x divided by 3 minus 4y cubed. Now, a lot of students ask me why I choose to use dy dx notation instead of using the y prime notation. And the real reason is when you got y's times y prime, and that little hash mark is very small. And it is real easy to lose a little hash mark on this thing, and then all of a sudden your derivative turned into a y function, and they're two totally different things, and then you end up screwing up the answer. So but really by denoting that derivative as dy dx with this implicit differentiation, it is uh, easier to control without making careless errors. But we're not done. We got one more hoop. So we did the same problem as we did before. So there's my derivative. However, we were asked to find y prime or dy dx evaluated at the point 2, negative 1. This means x equals 2 and y equals negative 1. So I'm going to take my implicit derivative here, and I'm going to replace all x's with 2 and all y's with negative 1. Let's see what we get. This would be 2 times 2, 2x, two, 2 times 2, divided by 3 minus 4, and y is negative 1, and we're cubing it. So, this dy dx evaluated at the point 2, negative 1 would end up being equal to, let's see here, that's 4 divided by negative 1 cubed, negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, times negative 4 is plus 4, plus 3 is 7. So, in other words, my slope of my tangent line is 4 sevenths. And then we can ask you maybe in the next question, use the, uh, find the equation of the tangent line by using the point slope formula. There's my slope, there's my point, and you can do lots of stuff with this. But that's the point. You can do lots of stuff with this. And your professor is going to go over much more uh, detailed and more advanced problems with these kind of uh, implicit rules. Because you notice up here, this is kind of one of our tougher ones because we had the product rule. When you start showing product rules and quotients in these things, you haven't used a quotient rule. These things can get rather nasty. But it's implicit differentiation, which is a very important technique of differentiation because I can't always take my interesting equation and actually solve it for y like we've been doing. So hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.